Before we jump into chapter 3, I felt like the topic of funk details was too important to pass up, but didn't really fit in anywhere else in the chapter so far. Improperly using this entity or not using it at all can cause you a ton of headaches, so I wanted to get this discussion out of the way as early as I could. Keep in mind this episode is only going to cover the very basics of optimization, focusing on funk details, as a later chapter will be entirely dedicated on the concept. This is just going to get you started on thinking about optimization and how it can affect your map. A funk detail is a brush entity that does not in any way affect visibility calculations. If you recall earlier in this series, you'll remember that when we compile our map, it has three stages, BSP, Viz, and Rad. The first two, BSP and Viz, handle general geometry and visibility in the map, while the latter, Rad, is lighting. In the BSP stage, your map is generated, checked for leaks, and the map's open spaces are cut up into chunks called Viz leaves, based off all the geometry that cuts visibility. In the viz stage, the compiler is taking all of your viz leaves created in the previous step and calculates which viz leaves can see which. Once the map is compiled and a player is standing in the map in game, the viz leaves they are standing in can tell the player every other viz leaf that can be seen from their perspective. Everything inside these viz leaves will render for the player. Now this system is used to optimize your map by helping guide the engine into knowing what should or should not be rendered for the player. However, it's not a perfect system. If your viz leaves are too large or are connecting in ways that a player standing inside of it could not actually see the connected viz leaves, it can cause the game to render parts of the map that the player cannot actually see, often leading to poor performance. One of our jobs as creator of the map is to guide these viz leaves into rendering things only when necessary. If you've ever been in a map that has absolutely terrible FPS, this is usually the culprit. Now it may sound convenient to just make as many cuts as possible in your map to make the rendering system as accurate as it can be in game, but while not necessarily untrue, this can lead to an atrocious compile time. If your map is getting hung up on the viz stage for a very excessive amount of time, it's probably due to too many unnecessary cuts on your viz leaves. But what can cause too many cuts in our viz leaves? By default, any world brush, i.e. any brush not tied to an entity, will make these cuts. You can see these viz leaves in Hammer by doing a normal BSP only compile and then going to Map, Load Portal File. This will generate a bunch of blue lines in your map. The interior space of each one of these is a single viz leaf. Now depending on the complexity of your map, this could be a cluttered mess. Every single one of these viz leaves has to be calculated against every single other viz leaf in the map so the compiler can determine if the two can see each other or not. The compiler draws a straight line between each viz leaf, and if that line is not broken by any solid world geometry, it considers it visible. So you can see how too many viz leaves can pile up fast, drastically slowing down your compile. Now in our test cough map here, let's say we throw around a few boxy brushes around. Maybe some tall, narrow brushes to act like pillars for another structure on top of it. And let's make a wall here to divide the map up a little bit. Now we can do another compile with only BSP selected again, and not loading the game after compile checked. Then we can reload our portal file. You can see how creating these new brushes affected our viz leaves. Each box making new cuts that extend out past it, and even intersecting with each other, creating even more new viz leaves. It's pretty messy, but it's not too drastic. But look what happens if we rotate some of these boxes. And now say, churn some of our basic blocky beams into cylinders. Maybe even add some detail trim to this wall here. And while we're at it, let's also add a platform to put our control point up on, with two ramps on either side leading up to it. Doing a fresh BSP only compile and reloading our portal file. Yeah, that's nasty. The engine isn't really the best at handling angle geometry when it comes to visibility. Every angle of our cylindrical beams and ramps and every tiny detail we created is shooting off more cuts into our viz leaves. Now consider how many of these little details and angles like this you find in a fully detailed map. Leaving these issues unchecked could very easily lead to a compile time taking multiple hours, even on a high-end computer. So what can we do to solve this issue? We can churn them into funk details. Now one thing to keep in mind is that a funk detailed brush cannot seal your map, so you have to be very cautious about what you do it to. Also keep in mind that you can go overboard with funk detailing. I'd much rather have a longer compile than my players having poor FPS on my map. It's a bit of a balancing act where you try to find a good middle ground of reasonable compile times and an optimized map. We can get rid of this tangled mess for now and turn our viz leaves back off by going to Map, Unload Portal File. So first let's start off with our pillars here. They're pretty small and if a player is standing on either side of them, they aren't really going to be blocking much of anything. So we can turn them all into funk details, causing them to be ignored when calculating our viz leaves. You can do so by selecting all of them with Control left click 
and then hitting Control T to turn them into a brush based entity. And conveniently, by default, your brush will be turned into a funk detail. Now something to keep in mind is that turning all of these brushes into a funk detail will group them together. If you have groups or objects selected in the top right here, you can edit the entity as a whole. If you want to edit just one of these brushes out of the whole grouped entity, you can select solids and do so. Mind you, if you have solids selected and then copy and paste these entities, it will copy it as world geometry rather than the entity. So in the future, if you're ever having trouble selecting your entity after you create it, make sure you have groups or objects selected. Now giving it another quick BSP only compile and updating our portal file, we can see how cleaned up around the pillars our viz leaves now are. Just simply making those few brushes funk detail has already greatly improved our visibility calculations and shortened our compile time. Let's see what else we can do for the rest of the map. Well, these rotated boxes aren't something we really need cutting visibility, so let's turn them into funk details. Also, all of these supports are making extra cuts despite not actually blocking the visibility of anything substantial behind them, just parts of the bigger wall. So let's make them all funk details as well. We'll leave the wall itself world geometry, as it is something significant in the map that could block visibility to other objects. Now our platform here is pretty tall, higher than eye level, so there could be something behind it that we can't see. But these ramps are just making angular cuts in our vis leaves and not really providing any cover, so let's funk detail them, but leave the platform as it is. Last, since this structure is so high up and floating above the ground anyway, it's not really worth it in my opinion to have it cut vis leaves. So let's make it a funk detail as well. This one, I'm honestly a bit iffy on, and it's something I'd probably test out to see if it actually would help or hurt our optimization if this was a larger map, so keep that in mind that a lot of these things are just judgement calls on your own part. Giving it a new BSP only compile and reloading our portal file, we can see that our viz leaves are dramatically improved. But what's this? Looks like I missed one of our support beams. Our portal file can make these missed world brushes stand out practically like a neon sign. Now in loading our portal file, we can see our map as it is again. On the right side here under viz groups, we can scroll down and toggle our funk details, or anything else not cutting our viz leaves, on or off, allowing us to view the map as the compiler sees it for visibility calculations. So to show you some more complex examples of funk detailing in completed maps, this is my map CP Glassworks with all of its world brushes, props, funk details, and displacements turned on. Turning off the funk details, props, and displacements, you can see the underlying shape of the map that the compiler factors in when it's determining visibility. It's pretty drastically different from how you see it in game. Here's what the portal file for it looks like. On a somewhat related note, the yellow material you're seeing everywhere is no draw, which is used to make a face not render at all, useful for places not able to be seen by players. This is another form of map optimization, but again something we'll go into in a future chapter. Another more complex example is my map Koth Probed. This one was more of a challenge for me to keep clean and efficient. Turning off funk details, props, and displacements again, you can see how the compiler sees the map for visibility purposes. But even with all of this funk detailing, this map, being a rather oddly shaped angular design, still has a pretty messy portal file. Please note again that this video is not intended to be a full explanation of optimization or the VizLeaf system, just a starter to get you thinking about how it all works, and to show you how to keep your compiles down to a reasonable amount of time without sacrificing the FPS for your players. I will be dedicating an entire chapter in the future to these concepts, but if you'd like to learn more on your own before then, check out the Half-Life 2 Map Editing Optimization Guide linked in the description below. This guide is how I personally learned, and I highly recommend everyone interested in mapping for any Source Engine game gives this guide a really good readover. This guide is basically the optimization bible. Now this actually concludes Chapter 2 of this series. Next episode we will begin Chapter 3 where we'll discuss gameplay concepts and layout theory, leading to finally getting your first map published and tested.